Yes, Chris, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So we will start. We had did we finish the exercise which we had started? One second. Yeah. Sir, I got to, I did the nine time, but I couldn't do the shit. Okay, we'll see. Wait, Uh, 3.1 first sum we did second we did third we did fourth fifth one I had given for homework you did it fifth one yes sir you got a correct answer yes sir yeah we had discussed also no? okay sixth one we did and now we were supposed to do the seventh seventh row. What is going on in the school? In geometry, uh, triangles had started. Now, are they doing all the sums or they are deleting some sums? Um, they are deleting some sums. I don't remember which one, sir, but. And in algebra, we started, we started polynomials. Polynomials now, they started, okay. Okay, now in this triangle, triangle ABC, and uh, bisectors of angle A and angle B intersect at point O. So you have a triangle. Let me do the triangle. This is triangle A. Okay, I'll put a name it like this. A, B, C. And what they say that angle of A and B, the bisectors of angle A and B 
they intersect at a point O. So this is bisector of A and this is bisector of B. They both intersect at O. Angle C is 70 degree. Find the measure of angle AOB. You have to find what is this measure. Is the question clear? Have you understood the question? What yes, is given and what you have to find? Okay. So let's start with the solution. Now, uh, ABC is a triangle uh, and uh, a and B, uh, bisectors of A and B intersect at O. Now, one thing to note. AO is angle bisector. So this angle here and this angle will be equal to each other. Correct. Similarly, this angle and this angle would be equal to each other. Okay, now if you look at uh, Okay, so there is one property that you have to use here. Okay, we'll use the property directly. The property what it says that this outer angle, angle, uh, and this inner angle, sorry, inner angle, that is what you have to find out. Angle AOB will be 90 degree plus half of the outer angle. That is half of this angle C. This is a property. This property you can use only if and this angle A here and this angle B, you have angle bisectors. Then only you can use this property. Understood the property, what it says? Yes. Sir. Okay. So now we have to just substitute the values. So this will be 90 degree plus angle C is 70 degree divided by 2, which is 35. So 90 degree plus 70 divided by 2 is 35. Therefore, you can say final angle. So, no, I don't understand. So, I'm also 90 degree. 
90 degrees it comes from the for formula aob oh. 125 degree it comes from the actually uh, to understand this how this property we need to do this example sum here on page uh, 27 there is an example sum exercise for the activity we have to do this to understand from where you get that 90 so look look into that look into your textbook uh, so look on the screen only uh, we'll do this activity then you will understand how that 90 came so in this figure angle b same like the uh, like the summators angle b and angle c has angle bisectors of a b c at point and their angle bisectors intersect at point p and you have to show that angle b p c that is this angle is 90 plus half of the angle bac this is a proof of that property now look into triangle abc okay triangle abc now in triangle abc you add all the angles so angle bac plus angle abc plus angle acb that is all three angles this one this one and this one bac is this one BAC is this one, ABC is this one, ACB is this one. So sum of the measure of all the angles in a triangle is equal to what? Is equal to what? 180 so here 180 degrees. Now what next what they have done is they have multiplied each term by half. So this multiplied by half, the second term multiplied by half, third term multiplied by half. Same thing, one half into 180. Now half into 180, you cancel and you'll get 90. So that's how they got 90 here. And from here, they have taken half common outside. So when you take half common outside, they're left with angle. No, 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 sorry, sorry. They have not taken half common. Half of angle ABC, half of angle ABC, this one is nothing but, okay, wait, I'll explain you this here. So just look at the second term, okay? Second term was half angle ABC. Now, one thing to note, angle ABC is equal to angle P, B, C. Sorry, half. Half of this angle, this and this are equal to each other. So I'm saying half of this entire thing is equal to this one, P, B, C. Did you understand this? Yes, sir. So in this example sum here, they have just replaced half of ABC as PBC. Same thing on the other side, half of ACB is PCB, just a replacement. Got it? Now, this half ABC is taken on the other side. So you have 90 degree minus half of BAC. So PBC plus PCB is equal to 90 minus half of BAC. Got it? Did you understand yes, equation one? Now look at the below triangle, that the smaller one, B, P, C. Look in this triangle. Okay, now in this triangle, again, you use angle sum measures. So that is angle B, P, C is this one, plus P, B, C is this inner one. Huh? P, B, C plus P, C, B, that is this one, is equal to 180 degree. Got it? Yes, sir. Now here, PBC plus PCB, you substitute this by equation one, it is 90 minus. So here you will write 90 minus half of angle BAC. Okay, this is substituted here, equal to 180 degree. Got it? Now in the next step, this entire bracket is taken on the other side. Okay, BPC as it is, 180 degree minus 
whole bracket is taken on the other side and they have put it into the bracket. So no, that's why they have not changed the sign. Okay. So next step, the sign is changed. So plus 90 became minus 90 plus minus half of BAC became plus half of BAC. Got it? Okay. Uh, can you write up to here into your notebook? Wait, 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 wait. Huh? I'll copy it here. So this is the next part of it. Uh, so uh, this went on the other side. So uh, 180 minus 90 plus half of BAC. So 180 minus 90 is 90. And that is how you get BPC is equal to half of angle BAC. Now BPC is nothing but this below one, this angle, this below angle BPC and 90 plus half of BAC. That is how we get this property, which we use in the next sum. Got it? Go yes. through this, go through this all again and uh, complete the activity in your textbook itself. Okay, write it with pencil in your textbook itself. I'll write it. Okay. Right.
It will do the eighth one. So in the eighth one, it's given line AB is parallel to CD. Okay, AB is parallel to CD. Line PQ is a transversal. Ray PT and Ray QT are bisectors of angle BPQ and Ray QT is a bisector of angle PQD. Okay, so you have two bisectors, angle bisector. You have to prove that angle PTQ, that is this angle formed here, is a 90 degree angle, a right angle. You have to prove that. Is the question clear what you have to do? Yes. Okay, we'll start with the solution. First thing it is given that AB is parallel to CD. This is the first thing given to you. Now, internal angles. Okay, uh, we are working on this side. So, can you tell me the internal angles? This side, interior angles, pair of interior angles. Angle, angle BPQ and PQD. PQD or DQP. And you studied one more property. Internal angles are, are what? Yeah, congruent is fine, but one more thing, if you add them, the sum of the interior angles are uh, supplementary, 180 degrees. So if you add the interior angles, you get 180 degree. Remember this? Yes or no? Do you remember this property? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we have to take, uh, since these are the angle bisectors, uh, we need this inside angles. So to find the inside angles, what you do is you just multiply half throughout or multiply each term by half. Okay, understand why we are doing it with half because there are angle bisectors and those angle bisectors divide that angle into half. That is why we are doing it half. So now half angle BPQ is nothing but this interior one, huh? TPQ or QPT. It will be QPT plus Sim similarly half of this below one will be PQT, PQT, which is equal to 90 degree. Did you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now look into this triangle now. In triangle P, T, Q or P, P, Q, T. Look into this triangle. Add all the angles in the triangle. Okay, we have to prove it 90 degree. I'll remove this sign for now. So angle P, T, Q plus angle Q, Q, P, 
पी प्लस एंगल पी क्यू टी विल बी इक्वल टू वन एटी डिग्री ओके बाय एंगल सम प्रॉपर्टी बाय एंगल सम प्रॉपर्टी ओके बट क्यू पी टी फ्रॉम हियर फ्रॉम हियर क्यू क्यू पी टी प्लस पी क्यू टी इज नाइंटी दैट मीन्स दिस इज नाइंटी डिग्री So keep this as it is. PTQ instead of that, write ninety degree equal to one eighty degree. Take ninety on the other side, so you'll have PTQ equal to one eighty minus ninety. One eighty minus ninety is nothing but ninety. So PTQ equals to ninety degree, and this is what you had to prove. Is this sum clear? Yes, sir. Okay, write it down now. Can you do the ninth one now? Try it on your own. Sir, 
did nine run on Reddit. You did not. Okay, what answer you got? Yeah. Uh, so you, so you gave it to me and info. That was right. What? You gave it to me as info. It was okay. right, sir. Okay, what what is the answer? Tell me, but what do you got? A is A is thirty degrees. Ah, uh, and B and B answer B is seventy degrees. And C C is eighty degrees. Okay, correct. Okay, what we'll do is this tenth one we'll do later on. You just check whether they have done the tenth one in the school or not, or is it deleted? Because I think there is some. Mistake in the tenth one, so I will see in how what it is, and you also just see whether they have done it or not in the school. The last one, okay. We'll continue. We'll do the next part. Remind me later on about the tenth one, okay. So we'll do now congruence of triangles. How to prove or what are the criteria needed to prove if two uh, triangles are congruent or not. So the first is first is called as the ASA test of congruency. Now in ASA test of congruency, do you remember what happens in A ASA? You had this in the eighth standard. Do you remember what is what happens? Two angles are acute angles. Ah, uh, no. Below angles. See, you have to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So this test, what it says, if you manage to prove one angle is congruent, that means angle B is congruent to angle Q, then the side, side B C. Is congruent to side QR, and angle C is congruent to angle R. Okay, that is this and this. If you manage to prove this in both the triangles, that means first you proved an angle, then you proved a side are congruent, and then you proved that again an angle is congruent. Okay, if you manage to prove this in both the triangles, you can say that triangle ABC. Is congruent to triangle T Q R, and the reason you will state that by ASA test of congruency, angle side angle test of congruency. Understood? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. One one thing to note, very very important to note, the side. Which is congruent should be between those two angles. Then only you can say ASA test. Do you understand what I said? Yes, sir. 
the side that you're proving congruent to each other, that side should be in between those two congruent angles. So you see this side is between these two angles. Similarly, this side, see, I'll do it color. This is congruent to this. This angle is congruent to this. Then this angle C in blue color is congruent to this angle R in uh, uh, angle R in blue colors that is marked with X. Now these two angles are congruent to each other and there's a side between them. Okay, the side between them BC here and QR here is also congruent. So that side has to be between the two angles. Then only you can say that it is congruent by ASA test of congruency. Got it? Write it down, write, make a note of ASA test. The second one is called S A S Test of Congruency. Okay, now in this, what happens? In the two triangles, you have to prove two sides and the angle between the two sides should be congruent to each other. So first, you prove AB is congruent to PQ. Then the angle, angle B should be congruent to angle Q. And then the side BC should be congruent to QR. So first you proved a side, then you proved an angle, and then you prove the side are congruent to each other. So finally, you can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by side angle side, SAS test. Now note one thing that this angle that you're proving congruent should be between those two congruent sides. Then only you can say it is SAS test. Got it? Yes. Okay. It should not be like this. You proved two side and the angle is somewhere else. Angle is not between that. that you cannot say that it will be 
side angle side to use side angle side test that angle that you are using that you are proving equal should be between the two congruent sides then only it will be sas test otherwise it will not be sas test got it write it down now Done, sir. Okay. Third one. Third one is called as the SSS test of congruency. Can you tell me what what should happen in this? Um, we, we, we find the congruency with, with the side, 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 side. Yes. All three sides should be congruent to each other in both the triangles. Okay. In all, both the triangles, all three sides should be congruent. So side AB should congruent to QP. Side uh, BC congruent to side QR and side ac congruent to side pr okay you can see this uh, diagram na, the num the lines on the sides okay here there is one side one line here there is one line that means this side is congruent to this side here there is two lines here also two lines that means this bc is congruent to qr here there is three lines here also there is three lines that means ac is congruent to P, uh, pr Got it? So, if you manage to prove uh, all... Huh? Any question? Okay. If you manage to prove all three sides are congruent to each other, then you can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by side, 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 SSS test of congruency. Got it? Write it down now. Write it down.
Okay, fourth one is called as the hypotenuse side test. Okay, fourth one is called as a hypotenuse side test. Now, first, firstly, both the triangles should be right angle triangles, 90 degree. Okay, and any one side and the hypotenuse have to be equal to each other. So if you manage to prove one side, suppose side AB is congruent to side PQ and the hypotenuse also are congruent. So hypotenuse AC is congruent to hypotenuse PR. If you manage to prove these two things, you can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by hypotenuse side test. Okay. So for hypotenuse side test, firstly, it has to be right angle. Okay. Right angle. Okay, right angle triangle. Then only you can check for hypotenuse side test. So in hypotenuse side test, any one side and the hypotenuse should be congruent to each other. You can directly say that both the triangles are congruent by hypotenuse side test. Understood? Did you understand? Yes. Write it down. This is the last one. Write it down. Okay, we'll start with practice at 3.2. This you can do it, write it in your textbook itself. Okay, so first sum with the pencil, you can write in the textbook itself. So you see this first sum, this one line here and one line here. What does this mean? Side AB is congruent to. PQ. Similarly, BC is congruent to QR. AC is congruent to PR. So these two triangles are congruent to each other by which test? Yes. Yes. So here you'll write triple S. S, S, S test. Second one. Yes. Side. Right. side, angle, side. Just by looking at the figure. Third one. 
Yes, 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 ASA test. And fourth one? Yes, hypertension type test. Okay, this activity we'll do in the next class. We'll stop here. Activity this uh, and fourth and fifth sum. This will continue. In the, so next I'll take on Thursday, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock.